Hello my friend and welcome back to my painting channel and in this video I am painting Amon Jakku which I think I've got that correct from the Asami core box in the Malifaux game. So this is Amon Jakku, he's like a small samurai demon guy. Uh, we're gonna follow a little bit of the box art for this guy so I'm gonna start off by painting his skin as I normally like to paint the skin first especially with a model like this where there's a lot of skin to paint. And the box art on this guy is uh, showing that he has blue skin, so we're going to paint him blue. And I'm starting here with a medium blue. So i got a nice thin down paint that is moving nicely onto the miniature. And we're just going to cover all of the skin areas in this nice medium blue. This blue is a great middle tone blue, as I said, uh, but it also pops really lovely on the miniature as well. And this ends up being a really nice... Um, sort of a really nice skin tone, it has a really nice effect on the miniature and when we put all of our other colours together uh, this this blue skin really does stand out and it really does look amazing. Because we're only doing the base tones at the moment you don't really need to have to be too um, careful doing uh, the base colours and doing the base tones because we're going to tidy all of these things up later anyway so you don't need to be exactly precise and perfect on the, the skin and things like that. So for the inside of the cloak, I'm going to paint this a black red. Um, this is a really dark, sort of like crimson, really dark, dark red, uh, which is really nice for the inside of the cloak. Then we're going to do the uh, teeth. So I'm just going to do the teeth and his claws, so his nails on both his hands and feet, all using a Vallejo bone white. So this is like a creamy white colour. So this isn't a straight flat white, it's not too extreme. Uh, being a cream colour means that we can build the tones and build the colours back up as well a little bit later um, in, in a nice smooth even way. Now looking on the box art, I've noticed that with the um, the horns, these are more of a sort of like a khaki sort of brownie colour. So I'm starting by base coating these with a green ochre colour and this colour is really really nice. Once we start using and putting the wash on and then building the colours back up, you'll see what I mean. This, uh, these, these horns uh, really stand out then a lot more on that blue skin using this green ochre. It's a lovely lovely colour to play with. It's a little bit like a khaki colour, but just a little bit sort of warmer, so it's got a little bit more sort of colour definition and a little bit more colour depth to it than just a khaki. Um, so it is really nice for the horns. Then the little wraps of uh, leathers, the little straps and things that are going around his ankles and his wrists. Uh, these I'm painting in a brown sand, so this is uh, like a very sort of like um, a light sort of brown colour. It's got a little bit of a different colour to what I normally work with in terms of the browns. Uh, but again, it just stands out in terms of uh, something a little bit different on the miniature and I'm trying to follow the box art as best that I can using sort of the colours that I've got in my range as well. And then I'm going to use a orange brown, one of my favourite colours. Uh, this colour is fantastic um, for things like ropes and things like that. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just using this orange brown to paint the rope. Just be very careful of the one rope that's inside on the front of the miniature. It's quite hard to get to and it can be a little bit difficult. As you can see, it's difficult for me to video paint in that. Uh, and the same with uh, the sword. He's actually got a sword on the inside of his cape here. So I'm using the Vallejo Gun Natal, which is one of my favourite silvers, and I'm just taking my time because it is very difficult to get inside the, ca the, the, the cape to do that. And I'm also painting, as you'll notice on the back there, just the hilt of the sword is the same colour. And from there I'm using a dark, dark colour then for the hair, so for this I'm using a German Grey, again one of my favourite colours. It's not a straight flat black, so it does have a little bit of colour tone and a little bit of texture to it, which allows you to play about with it a little bit more rather than just using a straight flat black and then having to paint up from there. So I'm painting his hair with that, but I'm also taking my time now and being as careful as possible just to paint up these, these big bushy eyebrows as well on the front. So I'm using the same colour for that as well. Yes, like so. Trying to be careful not to get this dark, dark grey on any of the blue. Doesn't matter too much, we could tidy this up. Like I say, this is all of just the base colours anyway, so we are going to be a little bit, or going a little bit further anyway. Now, if you are a fan of painting eyes, uh, with this guy he does have quite large eyes, especially considering the size of the model. So what I'm doing is I'm just using a very, very small dab of dead white, and I'm painting that just into the eye sockets. And again, if you're following on, exactly what I'm doing or if you're following along with me I'm painting a flat earth colour for the base um, 
uh, pretty much as you can see, I've just glued a few layers of cork on top of each other to create sort of like a muddy mud that he sat on top of. So I'm just using a flat earth colour just to paint the base up here, uh, and then that'll tone down and we'll dry brush that back up, and it'll look great later. Nice and simple, nothing too fancy. I find with bases sometimes, sometimes less is more with a base because if you paint the base up and you create a base that's way too over the top, it can sometimes detract from your miniature. And we don't want our own miniature, especially with the blue skin, to stand out and do all of the talking for us. Now this is probably the hardest part, or the bit that I've spent the most time doing. So what we're doing is, um, because he's got a patchwork cloak, I'm going to paint this as if he's wearing a cloak made up of loads of different cuts of skin, so loads of different people's skin. Now with skin, because there's so many different variations of skin tone in models and of course in the world, what I'm doing is I'm painting about four or five different skin tones on this and this is the bit that's going to take the longest. You don't have to do it this way, you can paint uh, it just one skin colour or one of these colours and pick your favourite. Um, but I'm going to try and do like a lot of different skin tones on here just to try to, to mix it up a little bit. So I'm starting with the dark rust first for a nice really sort of like um, a, a really dark skin colour, a really dark tone here. Then I'm moving on to the beige red to kind of make a little bit more of a, um, a lighter skin tone. And this one's going to be my medium skin tone. So I've got a really uh, nice dark one. Then I'm going to use this one as the medium. Then I'm going to have a highlighted lighter skin tone as well. And I'm also going to have a nice um, uh, sort of like ma mahogany sort of effect on one of them as well. But we'll show you that in a bit. We'll get there. So just using this uh, beige red, this beige red is, is a very, very good sort of base color for skin tones as well. Um, this one's great for sort of building up to a lighter skin tone, uh, which I'll show you on a different model in future. Um, so yeah, moving on, I'm using a, a flat brown. Uh, this one's a little bit more of like a reddy color, so this has got a little bit more red, a little bit more color to it, as especially you can see that next to the dark rust color next to it. So this one I'm going to use the sort of mahogany colour so that we get a little bit more sort of like a reddy tone through that, uh, that, that brown as well. And then I'm using a sunny skin tone so this one's going to be a little bit more sort of like a, a little bit more yellow so this one's got a little bit more of a, a yellow pigmentation as you can see the sunny side of things. And then for the extreme bright one, so for the, the lightest one, I'm going to use a basic skin tone. Now this one is very, very bright. Um, so I'm only using this in the corner, not to offset the whole thing and put a really bright tone in the middle. I'm just going to pop this one in the corner. And once I've done all of those different skin tones, then I'm just going to move on and use a wash. I'm going to use a Null Noil on this one, and I'm going to cover the whole miniature in the same colour wash. Uh, just so that it ties everything together. I mean, you can use different washes, different colors, and things like that if you want. No need all of the time. I mean, sometimes it does tie those colors in. Uh, but for this, this is absolutely fine, because by the time we build the colors and build those tones back up from the Null Noil, um, it'll look fantastic, it'll look fine. Now what I'm doing with this, I'm also covering the base as well. Again, just to tie things in together, so uh, the base will, um, that the model will sit together nicely on the base and it will all tie in together in a nice even fashion. Just be careful when you apply in your wash so that it doesn't pool in awkward ways and pool in areas that you don't want it to. And there you go, as soon as the wash has dried all together, we're then going to move on to building those colours back up. So, we're starting with, again, the skin. So I'm using the medium blue again, and as you can see, I'm just going to pick out all of the areas where the skin, uh, the, sorry, the, 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 the wash hasn't sat. So, areas where the wash is sitting, so just around the eyes here, across the nose, you can see the wash is sitting to create sort of a little bit of depth. I'm leaving the wash in there and just... Uh, painting up on the raised areas. So if you followed any of my other videos, you'll see how, how simple and how easy this is to do. And it's kind of like, as I say, painting my numbers, because now that you've put the wash on and you've applied it, you can see where all of the details are. And you're pretty much then just building those details back up. How are we gonna do this a couple of layers and a couple of times? So we're just starting off by doing the main base color that we started with originally. And from there, then we're gonna build up and add some highlights to it. And it's gonna have a really nice, color tone. So what I'm doing as you can see, just going around the side here, 
just using that brush, doesn't matter if you leave a few sort of like brush streaks and a few lines to show that it's been brushed, because the paint is thinned down, which I use a flow improver to thin rather than water, uh, but because the paint is thinned down, it's going to dry in a nice even, uh, a nice even sort of way onto the miniature. Now if your paint isn't dry and you just apply in big chunks of paint onto the miniature, it's not going to dry in the same way and what you're going to end up with is really sort of like big blotchy areas. So you want to make sure that the paint is nice and thin. Like I say, you can use water if you want, uh, but make sure that the water is clean because otherwise if you're using water that is dirty, that colour can bleed into the colours that you're using, especially if you're using lighter colours like skin tones. So I use a flow improver, this is like a, an, um, an artist acrylics flow improver from Winston & Newton. Um, it's pretty much like using um, uh, Lamian Medium from Citadel, it's the same sort of thing. And that's all it does is it naturally blends and, and thins your paint so that your paints, move, your paints move better off your brush onto the miniature, but they also dry in a nice even way as well. So, as I said, we're going to move on and we're going to highlight. So, once we've painted all around the blue and we've got that colour back, we're then going to mix in a small amount of dead white. Now, dead white from Vallejo is fantastic because it's a slightly off white. It's not directly perfectly white, but it is very, very vibrant. So, when you mix this colour in with other colours, not only does it increase the... Um, increase the tone of it so it increases it to be a highlight it also increases the vibrancy so your paints then underneath become very very vibrant so you'll notice with the blue I'm using about a 70 30 70 percent of the blue 30 percent of the white so I'm just adding one blob of the white into the, the blue that I've already mixed and again with this being nice and thin and with the vibrancy of that dead white you can see that, that blue is already starting to pop and you can keep on building that blue and you can keep on building those tones so whereas I've used 30% of white in the next layer I'm going to use 50% of white so we're going to use 50-50 so that's going to slightly build that back up and then again if you wanted to you could push that further and use 70% of white and then just pick out the extreme highlights the extreme parts of the knuckles and bits like that so it's all entirely up to you how far you want to push those highlights now for me, I normally work in threes. Threes I think is great for tabletop and it's, it's lovely for display on your uh, cabinet and things like that as well. You don't need to be uh, spending forever on building those tones. But if it's a model that you really, really do want to show off, spending a lot more time on those layers and building those tones and building those highlights uh, will actually make your model look fantastic and show off the amount of time and effort that you've put into it as well. So, as I said, using more of that dead white now to boost the colour again. So this is my third, so we've got our base colour, then our shade, back to our base colour, then a first highlight, then a second highlight. And this is really going to make the model pop then, because it's going to give a little bit more depth to that colour. And as you can see, I'm being a little bit more careful where I place this now. And again, because the paint is nice and thin, it's going to blend lovely into the layers below so it's not going to seem too extreme or too garish or you're not going to end up with uh, splodges in areas that you don't want because you can manipulate this and I'll show you this just down the side of his face here now so just around the edge of the ears just like so picking up on the real uh, the real edges the real extremes so as you can see just thinking about where the light is going to catch the model and there we go just catching around the eye socket just like so and of course doing that across the folds on the forehead as well again just thinking about where the light is going to catch on the model and then doing the same across the rest of the skin as I say because a lot of this model is skin and because it's a bright color like blue that skin is really going to stand out so because it stands out so much you're going to want to spend a bit more time trying to get the skin to look as good as possible because when this one's on display or when this model's on the board, you're going to want attention to be brought to the effort and the work that you've put into painting this. Um, but also, it's a really cool looking model as well, you want to do it justice. So I'm just spending a little bit more time showing you sort of how I'm painting the skin, just because, as I say, the amount of the model that is the skin, it's important that you spend more time on that. 
Now once that's done, another little hard part, or a part that takes a little bit of time, it takes a little bit of focus, but it's worth that focus, is doing the horns. So these horns, we're going back to that green ochre, and as you can see, I'm just trying to run across the very, very, very tip of the brush, along the ridges of the horns. So down the bottom, where it splits, you can see where the wash has just sat in between those little creases and in between those little ridges. So all we're trying to do is we're just going to paint across those ridges. Now this is a very fiddly little bit, and the, the painting that I've done, I've sped up so that the painting and the video doesn't take forever. So you can imagine, if this is sped up, you can imagine just how slow and how long a process this is. But take your time with this stage because this is the area and these are the areas that again, when you look at this model and people like your friends and things like that, look at this model when you're showing off, these are the bits that people are going to notice the most. They're going to look at that and think, wow, you spent some time on the details and it looks incredible. So take your time, just use the very, very tip of your brush. And then once you've done the base colour, that base area, what I'm doing then is I'm mixing in a small amount of bone white. So like we did with the skin, just using a 70% of the original colour and a small blob of the bone white. Now bone white is a creamy white, so this mixes really well with the khaki. This mixes better with the khaki than a direct white. And what I'm doing with this now, instead of going from the very bottom of the model, we're just going to go from about halfway. So we're just going to paint from about halfway. And why we're doing that with a thin down paint is because the bottom area is going to stay a little bit darker. And then bit by bit as we go further up the horns, we're going to start from a higher area. So that way then, the horns and the tips of the horns are going to be brighter than the bottom. So that that gives um, a really nice sort of transition between light and dark just on those horns. And again, that's going to allow those horns to pop. But again, as you can see, because it's taking a little bit of time, and a little bit of focus is worth spending this time because it is a fiddly little job but it will look incredible i promise so there we go just trying to use this going across the, the very tips like i say so just not, not going all of the way down the horns as you can see the beauty with this is by using such a thin down paint as i say this is going to blend quite nicely uh, between that light and dark and that's all we want is just that nice nice blend we want it to look a little bit more natural we don't want a nice big chunk of brighter color up on top and things like that so again using the bone white a little bit more this time so we're going for a 50 50 split so about half and half and just using see how i'm starting now from a little bit higher again and just coming down and gradually building that tone through and i mean you can build that up again and again and again so you can go further and further until the very tip of the horns are just uh, sort of a cream bone color if you like but i stopped at, at the three like i say i like to work in threes it seems a little bit more um it seems a little bit more natural to me so from there i'm just using the bone white on its own and going back over the top of the uh teeth and the um the nails so the fingernails and the uh, toenails as well just building that tone back up then Now once the bone white is dry, I normally use a Elphic Flesh, which is a fantastic highlight to bone white. So again, this is a creamy white, but this is a really vibrant, bright, creamy white. So you can paint this just across the edges, or you can create uh, little ridges in the teeth and things like that if you uh, really take your time and really take a look into how the teeth are sitting and, and things like that. So using this as a highlight, as you can see, I'm just using the very tip of the brush and just dragging that down so that I kind of create a little bit of a, uh, a ridge and things like that through the, the teeth as well. So then we're just moving back onto the original colour for the strappings. So we're just going back to that brown sand. And again, using the very, very tip of your brush, what I'm going to do is just paint around the edges, um, trying to leave a little bit of that wash sat in between. So just trying to use that, that wash as an extra layer of uh, like detail. So as you can see, just leaving that crease there in the middle so that we're not covering the whole thing back in the same colour. We don't want colours to be flat. We kind of want those colours to have a little bit of tone and a little bit of texture to them. So the easiest way to do that is to try to leave a little bit of that wash in between and that will allow them to have a little bit more uh, definition. And in the same way as I did the horns, using a little bit of that bone white, that little bit of cream white, just adding a small amount of that in so that, that creates a highlight and then using that highlight 
just using that on the very, very, very tips and the very, very edges here. And again, that's going to blend in lovely and that's going to allow the colour tone um, and the definition on those straps to really stand out. And it's such a small, fine little detail on these with the little straps. But if you spend that little bit of time just getting those little layers right, it will look a lot more natural to the eye. So the model as a whole will look much better for it. Now once we've done those straps, again we're just going to go back and do the black red on the inside and in the same way we're just going to paint down the folds but we're just going to leave where that um, black um, null oil wash has sat in between the creases. We're just going to leave that in the creases. And then to highlight that, we just mix in a little bit of burnt red in with the black red so this creates a, neat, a really nice natural red tone coming through. As you see, and you can push that further again if you want. You can make that a little bit lighter and things like that. But because we want this to be a really dark inside of a cape, I'm just going to use this um, just as a single sort of highlight here. As you see, I'm just using uh, just using it to pick up on the uh, the extreme edges, so the folds on the inside uh, on the outside, and leaving the sort of creased areas much darker. And now on to probably. One of the more fun and rewarding areas of the model. So we've done the skin on him in blue. So we're going to do the same kind of principle now, but all, on all of the different skin tones that we've made on the back. Because we're painting this with multiple skin tones, there are going to be a lot of different colours being thrown about here. Um, but don't worry, don't fret. They're going to work really, really nicely. So we're going back, and I'm starting with the beige red. I'm starting with my mid tone first. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just using the very, 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 very tip of the brush, as you can see. I'm just using that to make a lot, a lot of like really thin, quick, um, scratchy sort of uh, lines. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build this tone up. So we're just going to go across, and then I'm just going to fill in the gaps and fill in the blanks as and where I, I, I need. And the reason for that is because, again, like I was saying with these straps, you don't want to leave a big chunk of shade on the model. You don't want to leave a big chunk of the same colour back on the model because by just putting the colour straight back on flat, you're not having the definition come out of the shade and out of the wash. So we're going to build this up and try to leave uh, some of the underlying colour underneath. And by doing so then that gives it a bit more of a natural transition and it pulls your eye to the skin tone in a lot a, a much more natural way so once the normal beige red is dry then I'm gonna mix in some of the basic skin tone and the basic skin tone then we're just gonna do the same kind of thing but just on the more extreme areas so this time now we leave in some of that beige red showing through so not only do we have the darker area showing through from the wash we've also got the darker area from the beige red so this is then the highlighted point and by doing so then, again, that natural transition between the lighter and the darker areas is going to be a little bit easier for you to see on the eye. It's going to be a little bit nicer and a little bit more natural for you to look at. And we're going to use the same principle across all of the skin tones, but obviously there's going to be a lot of different colours being shown. So the basic skin tone that I mixed in with the colour above, the beige red, we're using that one on its own. And you can see how bright it is next to that beige red on its own. So we're doing the same thing, we're just going to build this colour back up using the shade in the recess points. Just like so. And by using the very tip of your brush, it gives you the opportunity to control where that paint is going. And also, because the paint is quite thin, you can put this on in two or three layers to get that colour to the area or to the, the level of consistency that you want. Now for this one to use a highlight, I'm adding a little bit of light flesh into this one. So light flesh is a very light colour, but it is a little bit pinky as well. So this does create a little bit of a different sort of colour tone, uh, especially next to the beige red mid-tone just above. And there you go, just looking at trying to keep it from uh, going into any of the recess points. So moving then on to the sunny skin tone, and once again, we're using the sunny skin tone to build that colour back up and to try to leave the uh, shaded areas nice and natural and deep. So kind of following where the lines are going, because there's a lot of creases in, uh, especially around the sort of shouldered areas as well. So just using that very tip of the brush again, as you can see, and just painting around, trying to keep this looking a little bit more natural. 
Now the good thing is when you're using a thin down paint like this, you paint it onto the miniature it might look a little bit too bright or a little bit too extreme, but then once it dries, it dries into a more natural and more um, workable sort of um, colour and then from there then you can always add more to your highlights and sort of build your highlights once it's dry. It gives you a better indication as to where your colour tone is. So from there then, as you can see, we just use in a little bit of the bone white then, adding that into the sunny skin tone. And by doing this, uh, this is going to build that highlight a little bit more naturally for us. And the bone white, as I say, is a nice creamy sort of white, so this will build a nice natural highlight without it becoming too um, vibrant. So whereas we were using the dead white earlier on the blue because we wanted the blue to be vibrant, on this is just going to be a little bit more of a natural transition. So the colour that we've got just across the bottom, we're going to go back to that flat brown and we're going to build that flat brown back up, again using the exact same principles, trying to avoid where the shade has landed in the, uh, the recess points and in the folds and all bits like that. So we're just going to build this flat brown back up now. A flat brown is a really, really nice colour. It's, a, it's a, a really nice sort of ready toned colour and it's a great colour to highlight and boost up as well. Um, it has a lot of potential for different things. So once we've used the flat brown, we're going to mix a little bit of our mahogany brown in, as I mentioned earlier. And we're just going to build our mahogany brown then into the flat brown. And as I said earlier about the uh, the red tones and how this has sort of a lot of um, like a, a, a more sort of like vibrant ready sort of brown colour to it. As you build our mahogany brown into it, you'll see just how much uh, potential uh, that this colour has for highlights then as well, which is fantastic. And then we're going to move on to the dark rust. So we're moving on to the darkest sort of skin tones that I've got on this uh, this model, on this cape. And this dark rust is one of my favourite colours for uh, base colours. So there's something that you can really sort of build colours on top of and build tones on top of. You can mix multiple colours into this and get different effects. So whereas we used the flat brown earlier and things like that, you could mix that in. There's leather brown as an option. Uh, there's other sort of... Um, uh, more sort of like um, less extreme browns that you can mix in. It's got a lot of potential this has. This is a very very good sort of colour. It's a really really good base colour as well. So it's one of my favourite. So doing what we've done with the others, I'm just going to go around and build the dark rust back up. Again avoiding where the null oil, because null oil is black, that creates a darker sort of patch for this which is great because then that allows us to see where all of the creases are. And from there, as I was saying, you can use multiple different colours for this one. But the choice that I've chosen for this one, to make it a little different to the flat brown and the mahogany brown, and I'm actually using a leather brown on this one, and the leather brown then is going to use, uh, it's going to give it a completely different sort of um, scope, uh, uh, sorry, a completely different skin tone to uh, the other colours that we've got on here, which is really going to make it a really interesting, diverse miniature with a lot of different uh, tones and, and skin colours and things like that on the back of it. Which is great, because again, this, is give, this gives you then a lot of cool different things to, uh, to look at. It pulls your eye in different ways, you've got the bright vibrant blue on the front versus all of those different colours on the back, um, but also it gives you a little thing that you can practice a lot of different skin tones with as well. So yeah, perfect. Now what I'm doing then is I'm just dabbing a little bit of silver just across the sword, so just across the hilt and just across the tip of the sword on the inside. It's awkward for me to film some of the bits on the inside because he's so low to the handle, um, but that's all I'm doing is just using the very tip of the brush just to dab a little bit of silver in to get a little bit of brightness back. And again, using the, the very tip of the brush, going back to that orange brown. Now, you could dry brush this bit if you like. I'm not a huge fan of dry brushing all of the time uh, because it can be quite messy, especially after all of the work that we've done on the skin. So I'm just building the orange back up by hand. Uh, but it's up to you, it's your model. You can paint how you like. If you prefer dry brushing, then you enjoy a bit of dry brushing. And then I'm just going to use the very, very, very uh, extreme sort of uh, light white. So this, this dead white, this very vibrant white, I'm using the very tip of my brush and I'm just painting all of those little stitches across the back of the cape. 
By painting all of those stitches across the back of the cape such a vibrant white, again that's going to give you a really nice transition between the light tones and the darker tones and it's going to look incredible. Now for the, the, the base I'm literally just dry brushing a little bit of beige brown and then I'm just gluing on some of my favourite little bits of um, uh, tufts of grass and things like that. So I've got a little bit of a purple flower on the one side just to add a little bit of colour and a little bit of depth and then I'm using um, like a little bit of Railway Scenics. If you've watched my video on how I base my Walking Dead miniatures uh, then you'll know all about these little tufts that I'm using here. And then all that's left is just to go around the, the base or the rim of the miniature in black. Um, you can use any colour you like. I know black isn't for everyone because it can be too definite. Um, and that's him all painted. There he looks now that he's all complete. Now, really spending that extra time on the blue skin tone looks incredible. He pops, he stands out loads. But also spending a lot of time on all those different patches and all those different skin tones really does set the model apart. It really does make the model look completely unique and completely different to anything else that I've painted before. So as always, thank you so so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.